It's a privilege here to be here today to honor Dr. King. And I know if he were alive today that he would be fighting the racial and economic injustice that marks our nation. But I also believe that he would be leading the charge to address the existential crisis that we face. The evidence of global climate change is right in front of our eyes, and it is going to affect the very poorest among us across this world. Since the turn of the century, we've seen the hottest days in recorded history. In the Antarctica, a chunk of the Larsen ice shelf the size of the state of Delaware is poised to break off. This is going to destabilize the ice shelf, and scientists predict that if it continues to disintegrate, that there will be an immediate and sharp rise in sea levels threatening coastal cities and islands. Yes, our very city of Washington, D.C. may go underwater. The insurance company Lloyd's of London recently wrote a report saying there is a significant chance in the next four decades of having chaotic weather events on several continents at the same time. This could lead to a series of cascading social, political, and economic disasters. We're talking about famine, food riots, civil war, and a crash of the global economy. Regardless, we know that more chaotic weather raises the price of food and causes deadly and destructive storms. We must keep fossil fuels in the ground and transition immediately to energy efficiency and renewable energy. We have less than 15 years to stop the worst effects of climate chaos before we reach the tipping point where the changes to our global climate are irreversible. Let's talk about a security issue. Let's talk about the bloated Pentagon budget, $600 billion or more. Think about if we took just a portion of that to help people to transition to that renewable energy future, to make every building in this country energy efficient. Imagine the jobs, imagine what we can do. But at, instead, while well, we face this profound crisis, we have a climate change denier who's been elected president, and he's appointed a slate of cabinet nominees with just absolutely shocking ties to the fossil fuel industry. We must be outraged and moved to action. We know the oil and gas industry is bent on drilling for every last drop. Yet Rex Tillerson, CEO of ExxonMobil, who's presided over the largest fracking enterprise in the world, may become our Secretary of State. I love Jackie's analogy that Scott Pruitt is a lot like Satan. He's going to head the Environmental Protection, Protection Agency He's repeatedly sued the agency on behalf of energy and other corporations. Attorney General nominee Jeff Sessions has an abysmal record on civil rights. He's accepted lots of campaign contributions from the oil and gas industry. He authored the first bill to exempt the oil and gas industry from our nation's laws. Rick Perry, slated to he head the Department of Energy, took $14 million of campaign contributions from the oil and gas industry. And just 
Less than a month ago, he resigned from the board of the Energy Transfer Partners, the company behind the Dakota Access Pipeline. There is no denying that we have a daunting battle with the forces of greed and selfishness ahead of us. But we cannot let this shocking and terrible turn of events with the election render us hopeless or helpless. We must continue to dream big and fight for the world that we want. We have a moral duty to both resist and also an obligation to develop a winning strategy. We can come together in all of our rich, wonderful, and beautiful ways that we are diverse, and we can unify and elect Donald Trump in four years. We can begin in 2018 to take Congress back from a group of people who want to send us back to feudal times. We must keep our spirits high and organize, organize, organize. Dr. King's words still inspire. Human progress is neither automatic nor inevitable. Every step towards the goal of justice requires sacrifice, suffering, and struggle. The tireless exertions and passionate concern of dedicated individuals like all of you, like us, like the human family.